Keep seeing people asking for a Bloodborne remake or a 60 FPS update or sequel. Hey, did you miss it? They made one and it's called Elden Ring. Heck, you can even start the game as Gehrman. You don't even have to wait until beating the final boss. It just takes a little farming. You've got to expect that though if you're going to use a scythe. To watch these runs live, follow me on Twitch. We're finding new ways to play Elden Ring all the time. Join the Patreon if you want to support the channel. There are exclusive videos there, and Patreon has a new feature where we can put them all in the Collections tab. So join, click Collections, and that's where they all are. No more scrolling through all the polls. Finally, make sure you're like and subscribed. Not being subscribed would be like taking part in some horrible, unending dream where you miss our videos every week. It's time to wake up in a new land where you're subscribed, and also like a squid, I guess. We'll kick things off as a Vagabond for the best Strength and Dexterity to grab our Hunter's Tool. Strength is for the Grip, Dexterity is for the Finesse. Catwabunga into Limgrave, don't worry he's not gonna break his legs, but he might pretend he did. Talk to Santa, my favorite Bloodborne character, and Melina for a horse. Now Bloodborne 2 won't have a horse, it will have a submarine because it's gonna be underwater, but this'll work for now. Get the Grace around the corner in Lernia and it's time to start farming. For a tool for farming. There's three skeletons that can drop the Grave Scythe, it's a scythe that's very grave. It's the heaviest one, leans on strength more than dex, and these suckers have a 2% drop rate. But with three bonies here, we can beat their bone juice down for triple the odds. Annoyingly, they respawn, so we have to hit them again. These enemies are called bone mamas, and you have to bash them with your Christmas cheer before it can lay an egg. Yeah! Bash that bone mama! Atta boy! That's good bone crushing! I don't know, y'all. I just gotta talk about farming somehow because it takes a while. They also have some death rank or spells, the standard skull dart thing, but the other one is a weird skull mine. Hey, FromSoft, can I have that? No? I don't even think it'd be good. The death sorceries are all kind of ass in general. I just like the option. After killing around 36 skeletons, I decide, fudge it, let's go grab some feet. Silver pickled foul feet, to be specific, to boost our item discovery by 50 points, which means that the grave scythe now has, uh math odds to drop better math but i'm not doing math you don't want to watch me do that i like to count with pokemon the scythe drops with bell sprout which is pretty nice now someone who will remain nameless told me spinning slash was good on this weapon and hey we have it on the scythe already so it must be pretty good probably we can buy another copy of it from bernal but have to kill some dogs first why get a second copy when we already have one well doubles makes it safe that way if we get a scratch on one of them it's no big deal save alex and spinning slash is gonna be so good obviously we're gonna want the jar shard later spinning works great on nerd juice he's got tiny little daggers and our spin catches him before he can hit us so far so good we grab some more Garmin pants and then we get bamboozled by patches. Here's where our scythe gets to shine. The scythe gets to ignore 20% of shield defenses and the shield doesn't block bleed, which the scythe does. This boss fight goes great. Can't wait for all the other boss fights we're going to have against bosses with shields. <laughs> At least we get some leather to look a little more Germany. Now we gotta get that blunder bussy, but hey Phil, there aren't any blunder buses in Elden Ring. Unless we go to the death touched catacombs and take on a black knife assassin. Thank God somebody already started the boss fight. That should make it a little bit faster. It really does just spin and get that win. Wow, I hope all our boss fights are against losers with low poise and daggers. <laughs> Just when I thought we were done bashing the bonies, they drag us back in with the Tibia Mariner and his teleporting shenanigans. Oh crap! One of the bonies made it through the Christmas portal! Yeah, we don't even let him make any bone soldiers. We kind of just break him down over and over again. I guess we trade a little bit, but like, it's a Tibia Mariner. Who cares? Now we have two pieces of death spaghetti and can trade that in with Garong for the Bestial Sling. It's a shotgun of rocks or a rock gun, and it's a great spell we're going to use against a lot of bosses. <laughs> Now we can imagine Bloodborne in 60 FPS in Fort Height for the first piece of the Dectus Medallion. Gotta run through learning and jump off a bridge, yada yada yada. We're in the Raya Lucaria Crystal Tunnel for Bloodstones. Hard. Almost fell off, but nobody saw that. Don't worry about it. Crystallion time, and wow, the first four bosses have gone so smoothly. I can't believe it. This is gonna be a great run. The scythe will continue to be a great weapon the whole time. Dectus 2 in Fort Faroth. We make it out without having to head into the Hunter's Dream. This Hunter's Stream is gonna end at the bottom of the Dectus Lift. In the next Hunter's Stream, things are gonna go great. Welcome back to the game. Let's go to Altus. Can't imagine how someone from Yarnum would feel hitting Altus. I 
grab some stones to make the hunter's tool we're swinging more effective, and then we can head into the abandoned cave. It's a risky move coming in here before we kill the big dragon. As you can see, one geyser can kill us. That means that's a risk every time we fight the clean rot knights, and ooh boy, two clean rots at the same time with low vigor, a slow weapon, and no spirit ash to even the odds? Ah, it's not gonna go great. I was a little wrong earlier, but not really. The spear knight can block and the scythe goes around it, but technically I said we didn't have a shield boss left, not a guarding boss. You are technically correct. The best kind of correct. But uh, yeah, the scythe doesn't kill the first one fast enough, and avoiding the destructo discs and spear attacks at the same time is rough. Also, spinning slash gets interrupted really easily. The only weakness of this Ash of War is enemies who fight back a little bit. It takes us three attempts, but eventually we get the win. Some stance breaks allow us to heal a bit with the Assassin's Crimson Dagger, a very bloodborne talisman that heals you with crits. Actually, that isn't really how Rally works, but eh, the Black Knife dropped it. The Golden Scarab is more important. We can make more money now. And it's time to make that. That money, baby. First Grail, the scythe has bleed, it makes this a little faster. Faster than something that doesn't have bleed, but slower than just about any other thing that does have bleed. This is a slow weapon. The Knight's Cavalry falls off really easily in a weird place, but I'll take it, and then we go for the Putrid Avatar. Bloodborne doesn't have any Asylum Demon clones, but come on, we've been fighting these things for 10 years, it's not tough. It can't bleed, so it's gonna take a while, but I do want to do this first for a very specific reason. We pop the pickle at the end, we can turn on a three minute timer to go fight Grail. Now, if Grail dies within that window, we don't need another pickle, since the pickle we used on the big booty tree will also work on this bad dragon. Grail can bleed, and the scythe has spear length. All jumping R2 attacks are the same speed, and these dragons are meant to be hit with those jumping R2s, as long as your hunter's tool has a little bit of length, like the better end of average or longer. Since that doubles up the stance damage, it means the dragon lays down really fast, we can combo, then crit the head for huge damage, and get this all done in that time window. Waste not, want not, dragon not. Google dragon not on your work computer if you want to know what I was talking about. We've got a bunch of runes. I want some more space in these pockets, so let's hack up Margaret. Just spin, oh, sorry, uh, just spin out oh, wait sorry no just spit oh god damn it every time we go for spinning slash it gets interrupted we're double cheeked up with vigor though so at least for this fight we can trade for the win bad trade on his end party time Don is a big boy and our armor sucks this is the point in the game where your armor actually matters it kind of stops mattering after you hit the royal capital it's also why i kind of don't care about armor for most of this series if i'm going to be canceled for an elden ring opinion make it that fashion souls is a waste of time and you should just put any shit on you find so you're not naked unless you want to use the blue dancer lot of you Yada yada, we die in a two hit combo. Back at it again, we're just getting hit by everything. The scythe feels weird and unwieldy. I really, really hate this weapon. Maybe I haven't complained enough for you to realize that, but trust me, I will before this is over. He's hitting around 30% before he hops up, then he hops down and we finish him off. Actually, a really important boss. Now that he's finished off, we can enter his hole and fight Garman, but worse, we took his scythe away. He's not really gonna be a problem. Spinning is a good trick here. <laughs> since he's a really pathetic, terrible fighter. Really terrible fighters are where the scythe gets to shine. This is also the boss we used Bestial Sling against, just to say like, I don't know, we used it. There it is. Everyone sees me using it. In the Night's Sacred Ground, we get the Black Web Blade so we can make our scythe a cult, the best infusion for it. Somebody said Heavy is the best infusion for the Grave Scythe, but uh, hey, wrong. I did the math on it. Heavy versus a cult with the 60 stat caps for each of the respective stats, Heavy would do a little more damage. That's true, but a cult would have double the bleed buildup. I guess Heavy is better against bosses who can't bleed, but that's not very many bosses, and I'm not gonna run and get a larval tier every time. Oh, and I guess quality technically has the highest damage, but who has time to crank strength and dexterity all the way to 60? Also, still not as good as getting more bleed. But also, don't go for bleed, because bleed neuters your damage so much, a cult ends up being the best, trust me. And if you think it's debatable, fine. I just think a cult works the best. All right, now we should be able to do some early easy bosses pretty fast. Danger Path, we could rock the quickening, but not really, because for some reason, they nerfed Bloodhound Step. I have no idea why it was entirely fair and balanced. Godric gets hit with some spinning. He has some spinning of his own that makes tornadoes, but no worries. We've been so aggressive, I'm sure in phase two, we're gonna get a stance break uh, any any minute here. I might've gotten a little greedy, but as long as we're gonna get, oh God, 
god, we got grabbed. Is that allowed? Phase two of Godric and he gets to like attack and stuff? Okay, let's activate the Great Rune, get plus five to every stat. That should be enough damage to stop this from being so terrible. Gilka can also boost the damage if we get the Ritual Sword Talisman. And oh my god, why is Gilka a problem? Good lord. Okay, we got 10% more damage now. Now we're gonna be okay. Raya Lucaria, really fast. The Scythe can deal damage to the Red Wolf of Radagon, but I mean like <laughs> Vari's Bouquet can handle this fight. Quit out with Moongrim and then it's Renala time. Hey, this actually does do great. She bleeds down in phase one for a nice one cycle and then just like damn combo game in phase two really really smooth fight not totally sure why considering how bad the rest of this run is gonna go spoilers but uh, i'll take this win carry a manor loretta goes slower she runs away we don't have any stance pressure to stop her and we can't make her bleed if only we went heavy really right? hello to ronnie and the gang get the knife underground bring it back up for her and trade it for the statue for the study hall then look at the dolls in the basement wow that's a lot of dolls we could use a doll but not like that don't be gross i hate that i have to address this but i know every comment's gonna be full of everyone that's like did you know garman bangs the doll and hey stop it get some help but we screwed up. You gotta talk to Selvis before you get the Ronnie knife, otherwise she kills him. Like, good for her, but bad for us. Somehow, you can still get the dolls from Selvis's corpse, but the prices are higher? Did the corpse raise the prices? The economy is in shambles. On our way to get the Starlight's hard that we need to buy the doll, I start farming for a cool hat. There's lots of dudes who can drop the hat I want right here, and they don't drop it. Oh well. Now I'm committed though, so let's hack up the pumpkin head, even if we keep bonking his pumpkinous head. That's the closest grace I want to farm for what I want to wear. The hat actually drops on the second farm session. That's really good. That's the power of building off of Arcane. Now we can get the Theralina Ashes. They'll be our doll of choice. Are they the most accurate? Maybe not really, since the doll is based on Maria, so maybe they should be able to throw hands but they're the fastest and I don't want to run around grabbing a million different Starlight's hearts or run around for the Nefeli quest or Dolores. Sorry y'all, this run is just kind of slow thanks to the scythe and I don't want to make it slower. Thankfully, everything we need to max her out is on the way to Astel, aka FromSoft's preview boss of Bloodborne 2. Obviously, Garman will do well in the Incel River main considering the time he spends with dolls. Wahoo, done that. We talked to Doll Jr., aka Rodrika, and then head back to Nakron for the Ghost Bell Bearing 1. Forgot to pick that up earlier. Whoops. Maxed out there, Alina. Now we can start working on ourselves. Probably should have done that first. Really should have done that first because we're not even bringing the doll to our next boss, the Cleric Beast. He loves to run, loves to heal. Our damage sucks. He's a freak. He's a fast killer. He's a fast killer. Cardio is so important. Actually, not really. But if you're doing cardio, that's fine. Just try to get active in some way if you're able to. It's great for improving your mood and your energy, even if it's chasing a stupid blue moose. Suffering time. Let's fight the twin gargoyles. You know how some people think Bloodborne is the best Souls game? It's one of the very few Souls games that doesn't have a gargoyle gank fight. Coincidence? I think not! These two have big slash resistance, and they can't bleed, and there's two of them, and our weapon doesn't have good raw damage output, and even one of them is kind of annoying. We've been trying to do this instead of the Tree Sentinel for our all Membees runs lately, since it's kind of faster to open up the path to Deep Root while you open the path to the Royal Capital. The last few runs have used strong weapons, like Merica's Hammer or the Bloodhound Fang. Hey, I should uh, go get the Bloodhound Fang and just say it's the sword version of the Burial Blade. But I don't, because uh, that would be too easy, and it's more interesting if I suffer a little bit, right? Throwing our corpse at this brick wall ain't hitting. The wall is hitting us. So alas, let's head above ground and take on the tree sentinel. Hello, old friend. Well, not a friend. Uh, hello, old piece of shit. Better. He resists slashing just as much as the Valiant Gargoyles, but he can bleed, and there's only one of him. Honestly, given the choice between fighting this guy and a single gargoyle, I think I'd still fight him. That's why we used to do this. He smashes the shit out of us, though. Spinning is not a good trick. It's slow, so I don't know why I keep trying it. Third try, we get enough bleed from our stray hits for the win. At least we're in the Royal Capital, an even brighter section of Altus. Get some sunglasses, Garman. Third tree avatar goes fine. It's slow because it doesn't bleed. Y'all are probably understanding how most of these fights are going by now. If they bleed, it goes fine. If they don't bleed, it goes slow, but usually fine and sometimes bad. The Ritual Shield Talisman will make us die less. I guess that's good. And the Aldrich set will make us look cooler. Hey, wait. Aldrich Aldrich is a Dark Souls 3 guy, not a Bloodborne guy. Godfrey Shade time. He's large, he's in charge, and he's barging all around. Feralina works great with our Ritual Shield Talisman, though basically always healing us back up to full so we can just slowly trade with our crappy scythe until it's done. To be fair to the scythe, we're still using it more than the bestial slay. 
Morgoth time, he's all slimy and puts blood flame on his blade, but we can dodge it. He can also bleed, so that's nice. It's a really big positive for the scythe, but it's really the only one. We used the Nagakiba in one of the runs on the Patreon, and I called it a spear with a katana duct taped to the top. The scythe is the same thing, but they taped it in a really stupid way. Whoever made the Nagakiba made the spear longer, but the guy duct taping it to the scythe just kind of put the katana under the tip of the spear. Why? With Morgoth dead, we can make the most out of the sewers. Now this is Bloodborne. It's dark, it's wet, and covered in shit. It feels like we're actually in London. We're gonna take a detour to the Lindell Catacombs. It's like one of the Chalice Dungeons. You shouldn't do it, it isn't fun, but the rewards are pretty good. Asker is a boss. He should be easy since he's just got a knife and two dogs. Oh. Well, I guess I lied twice then, because this is another boss with a knife and it doesn't go smoothly at all. We get ganged up on and can't swing through the dogs at the same time. We end up getting carved up twice, but third try we're just a little more careful and bleed Esker before he bleeds us. That gives us the Lord of Blood's Exaltation, raising our damage by 20% after someone bleeds close to us. Moog is weak to bleeding, or at least the real version is. The underground one is immune to it, so he's weak to, well, nothing, I guess? Yeah, nothing. Theralina clutches it out again, since all all we can do is tickle him with our scythe, it's gonna take a while. And she keeps herself alive with her healing as well, distracts the boss sometimes with the little pots. Normally I say spirit ashes don't carry us, but uh, get this lady a chiropractor because the team is on her back. For Biden lands, remember disability accessibility is cool and just like nice. I don't know why this one's gonna be controversial, but someone's gonna be mad about the taxes caused by rampant ramp spending. Ramps are also good for skateboards. Everyone loves a ramp and it's easier to make than stairs. Hey, Shabriri, the Ronin set looks weirdly good for Garmin, so uh, I'm gonna kill you. I guess it's also the best defensive option? Hmm, that's nice. Falling down a hole to the deep root depths because I have ADHD and can't decide what I want to do. Ants, I guess I want to do ants. They give us some Newman runes we can use to upgrade the scythe to plus 18 before going back to the mountaintops of the giants. Lawrence is taller than he was in the Bloodborne DLC, but that just makes him slower and easier to deal with. Hey, he's like the grave scythe of Lawrence's. Go for the ankles break them, bleed them, yada yada yada. Phase two, more of the same. We're not gonna do much more here. I forgot how good this dude's turning radius is when he does the fire breath. Hey, that's also like Lawrence. Oh wait, and phase two starts when he rips limbs off? That's so Lawrence, the first vicar. Oh, yep, that's me. We're kind of going into endgame now, and Garmin isn't going to go into endgame if the hub area isn't on fire. Arson time. Everyone wants to know if I'll play the Convergence mod, and no, I'm on PS5. If I did get a mod, though, it would just change the cutscene where Melina jumps into the fire, so she says welcome to Jackass before she jumps in. Only mod I'd use. Godskin time, they're weak to slash and bleed. Finally, something we're good at. Chunky first, then skinny. Another one tries to summon, we kill it, and Chunky tries to summon, we kill that. I could point out that they were alive long enough to try and summon. Probably not a great look for the scythe, but I won't. I don't want to whine too much. And hey, now it's maxed out. Surely the rest of this dream will be a pleasant one. Here lies Squidward's hopes and dreams. What a baby. Fia's champs actually go fine. We spin and the Ronin set gives us enough poise to push through the stray hits here and there. And then back to the castle's hole, since I can't decide where I want to be. Ghosts can't bleed, they're not fire. The shield one almost gets us down first, but we're able to squeeze it out. Niall can bleed, so we just kind of tickle him until his heart explodes. It's not nice, but it's definitely effective. Finally, a boss we can properly fight. Not Niall. This old man who can't move or fight back. It's what the scythe does best. It isn't particularly better served than any other weapon is for this, but it does do the job. Hidden path through the halog tree, then the consecrated snowfield. Penguin Noble gets put through the spin cycle, and we're already off to Mogwen Palace. Theralina can help us buy some rune arcs by fighting unruly patrons. Not like my patrons, they're all very ruly. Thanks for patreoning me. Moog time! We have the stance breaking tier and the charged attack tier. Why not the Eleonora tier that would stop us from bleeding? Maybe I want to bleed. Lord of Blood's exaltation gives us a damage boost. And hey, we are from Bloodborne after all. Blood. 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 That might have been too greedy, because we get shredded and die in phase two. Second try is where it's at, and it really should be. God, Moog is very bad at bleeding, and we have bleed on our weapon. He's a hemophile, I think that's the word. He's some sort of file, for sure. We have enough spare stats to get our arcane and vigor to 60, so what the hell, let's do it and get Radon's Great Rune instead, even though we won't be able to swap it out until we die or waste it. For Amazula, swag jump, do the bird run, and kill the draconic bee sentinel. I don't know what the buzz is about this 
lady. That's right, you thought it was a man? No, we stand a draconic queen. Sorry, patriarchal hive mind. I'm sure this one stings. Maybe you should download Bumble and get some maidens. Malekith can be rough, but this actually goes okay. We're breaking the stance, which is more of a testament to how low his stance is. We could use a few easy wins, though. Gideon off near next. Wow, can you imagine an old man hanging out in the hub world, then showing up at the end of the game to kill you before you can fight a god? German would never. At least we got some easy ones out of the way. Okay, uh, I don't know what happened here. Godfrey beats the hell out of us. Like a lot. Part of it's greed on my part. I just thought we'd break his stance considering we're using the stance doubling physic tier. Silly me, why would that do anything? Frustratingly, we keep breaking the stance right at the phase transition. Hearing that sound in the cutscene, it's the sound of my heart getting broken in two. And this is the sound of my body getting broken in two. Oh, well. Is he gonna throw me out of the arena? No, he's just gonna rip me in half. Thank you, daddy. Look, if daddy's gonna split us in half, we better thank him. The frustration just makes me get greedier and greedier. I really just want this to be over. It's not totally on the scythe, but it's a little on the scythe. Like, he should just be dead after this many hits. Mostly on me, though, for being a greedy little dirtbag. Back again in about time, too, and this time we're uh, looking for better Ash of War. Or a lateral move Ash of War. The Sword Dance. Swords Dance, what is this? Scyther Secret starting class? Uh, no, that'd be two Power Stance Scythes, which I can't imagine is any better than two two-handing one. Radagon can't bleed and ends up just beating us up a lot with a hammer while we test out the new Ash of War. Hey, tests gotta be tests, right? Shouldn't get grabbed though. Come on, that's uh, that's day one stuff. This attempt, things are going well. I actually look like I'm dodging stuff and I know how this fight works. That's amazing. Till we get hit by the stomp in midair? Oh, right, because we had to be close enough for the scythe to hit that he can hit us with his foot. His foot is as long as our scythe. Also, apparently you can hit him during the teleport? Never mind, I don't know this fight at all. Weird stuff is happening today. Fully charged attack after the hammer slammer, finally break his stance and move on to the moon presence. Run in and start that combo time. Just gotta keep it up until we get a stance break and a free charge attack after. Bit of rain, no big deal. I'm from Fantasy London. Finally get the rings and also no big deal. Here comes the big wave, but we're in close enough. Honestly, I don't know how you're supposed to avoid that if you're not close enough. Don't need to think about it. As Elden Stars come out, I just read in for a stance break and finally get it after the big sword explosion. More rain and rings again, not a problem. We're just running around doing cardio again. Thank goodness we got to practice our cardio earlier against the moose. Takes some time, but we beat the moose presence. Now, Parhol is a boss I always forget exists. Study all to open it up then, right up for the curse mark of death, but then time to say hello to an old friend, ADHD, calling us to grab another Ash of War. This one's in Celia, and we grab Double Slash from the rooftops. This one's pretty good. Hug Fia any percent speed run, maybe with some actual physical contact, Garman will leave that doll alone. For Fortisax, we have an actual special advantage. The Grave Scythe gives you more Deathblight resistance. Dark Beast Parl, eat your heart out, we're gonna win! Oh shit! Okay. Hey, weren't we supposed to be b better at this? Does Deathblight Resistance not actually matter very much? Does a scythe that goes around blocking enemies not actually matter that much? Turns out the strongest thing in Elden Ring is not auto death clouds or even a big ass dragon. It's the camera. And if you can't lock your shit onto the dragon toes, you don't get to see what you're doing. Hey, just like Parl in Bloodborne, you can't see what's happening and it's all very terrible and there's a bunch of lightning everywhere and it just kind of hits you and you don't really even know what hit you. You just kind of run around and hope you win sometimes. We won sometimes. Is Placidious Axe the one reborn? I'm gonna say it is. Big, weird, janky body. Hitboxes all around. I just kinda greed through and hope I win. Doesn't that sound familiar? Lead is good. We put him in the corner, hack out his ass. That's a, that's, a, that's a win. Time for trouble. Or I guess, time to prepare for trouble. Hey, let's make it double. It's another Godskin duo fight, and this time they're ghosts that can't bleed. Bummer. Lots of people think Bloodborne's the best FromSoft game, and it doesn't have repeat bosses. Coincidence? I think not! Whatever, we can handle these two, it's not that bad. We can also handle the crab man, that's fine. Riot can't handle our jumping though. Calm down, sweetie, it's only aerobic exercise. Volcano Manor time, and this whole town is in one manner? God, we gotta eat the rich. That's the idea. 
God's skin again. Hey, did you know Bloodborne doesn't repeat bosses? If I was a Bloodborne creator, I wouldn't repeat these jokes. Now it's time for Rikard, and I think the scythe should be long enough. We're using Lord of Blood's Exaltation to do more damage when we bleed, and Godskin Swaddling Cloth from the duo to heal off of our combos. That's the only part of this that works. The scythe is too short for phase two, Rikard's body is wrong, and the fight is just mad at you for not using the Storm Ruler. Hey, Bloodborne, no Storm Ruler fight. What a cool game. People think it's the best one. I wonder why. The whole fight is unfair if you're not using Storm Ruler, but Hell Phase is truly bullshit. Half the time you try to lock on, the game says, no, I'm turning the camera 180 degrees. You don't even get to look at him. And you have skulls exploding with hitboxes that are separate from the sword and come out untethered to the timing of the skulls. So it's basically like you're getting janked to death by two bosses at the same time. And unlike the rest of the game, you can't really use a Spirit Ash to distract the quote unquote second boss. It's even worse if it happens during the sneaky part of phase two. During the winning run, we just kind of run around in a circle for like two minutes. Rikard Enjoyers, is this what you love? Running in circles, unable to participate in the boss fight? What's wrong with you? At least it's over. Almost forgot to fight Estelle. Thankfully, someone in the chat reminded me just to run through the doo-doo lake and then we can fight the Bloodborne Shrimp. I don't really even know what Bloodborne boss I'm calling it. It just makes you feel like you're in Bloodborne. This one goes well probably because there's a synergistic design philosophy, you know? We get some real god-tier dodges in Liturgical. Like, look at this. He's beginning to believe. This is apparently a skill check. Two archers shooting six total hitboxes at you without having to line up the timing of their shots. Yeah, that's not random at all. Totally a skill move. Just get good if you can't deal with it. How like three time? We missed the swag jump. I'm not sure how this is the scythe's fault, but I am going to blame it on the scythe. Hell, we lose to Loretta. This is the roughest run we've had since we wrapped up monostat non-vigor runs. Eventually she bleeds to death and we have an awkward amount of runes. So, uh, putrid avatar? Sure. Putrid Avatar. Also helps the boss total. LFL time, we fell down, so we have to pass the Royal Revenant. It's very Bloodborne pilled, that's fine. Halic Tree Knight won't let me sleep, that's a bummer. And we use Quickening for the Rotterfall. That's actually pretty nice. Then the spiders kill us one more time, which sucks. I really don't want to die again this run. I mean, Lady Marinia is going to be free for sure. All right, so Bleed is pretty good against Melania, but her Bleed is also kind of broken. For those who don't know, the more you stack Bleed, the higher boss's resistance to Bleed goes. Against every other boss with two phases, that resistance resets to the base level on the second phase. So, Beast Clergy turns into Malekith, or Godfrey turns into Horaloo, you can bleed them fast again. Melania is the only two-phase boss who doesn't do that. Very fun. Every time I'm doing this fight, I feel like I need to learn how to do it again, and that's kind of true. This time especially, I've never used a Reaper for this fight before. Or I guess, wait, no, we used the Halo Scythe in the Clean Rot Knight Finlay run, but you don't use the Reaper part of that. You use the Ash of War, because the Ash of War is really good. Other fun quirk of this game, if we get a stance break and then bleed during the crit, that does not activate Lord of Blood's Exaltation. Great game, works perfectly. Other thing I forgot to mention, I didn't swap on a new Ash of War after the Rotterfall, so we're using Bloodhound Step, and it's pretty good. Better than any of the other Ashes of War we can put on the Scythe, or at least that we can put on the Scythe and are still in the spirit of Germen. All right, too many deaths, let's do a Weeping Peninsula Detour to upgrade our Blood Vials. Trying again with better heals, it really doesn't make that much of a difference. The Grave Scythe just can't kill her fast enough without doing a bunch of shit we can't do. I just put Blood Flame Blade on my Grave Scythe to use Spinning Slash. Cool, dude, does Germen ever set his Scythe on fire? No. Oh, then we're not doing that. If you're in the fight too long, you're gonna get hit with something. Ring around the rosy sometimes works on the ducky dance, but most of the time for me, it does not. Not really sure what the dev intended way to dodge this move is, but I don't think it's running around her in a circle like you're playing a children's game. Doesn't seem in the spirit of Elden Ring. Instead, we just play a different game called try to keep your distance after she's below 75% health because she could ducky at any moment and you need to be at least 10 feet away from her when she starts so you can run back far enough to not die. Not a great name for a game, but it's the ideal title for a YouTube video. The more words you can put in there, the better. You need to be really specific. 
Using blood-infused Ashes of War does give us more bleed, but cuts our damage too much. Using Heavy or Quality would buff our damage, but cuts our bleed too much. Occult is the best balance between the two options, especially considering bleed procs are going to be rarer in Phase 2 anyway. Eventually, we do get a winning run, like we didn't give up here. We lead with a jumper, it closes the distance best, and does some good stance pressure. Sometimes you can Bloodhound step out of the flurry, sometimes it still just hits. I know you're supposed to go to the right and not go backwards, but sometimes that doesn't work either. God, so much about this fight isn't fun to deal with. The dodges aren't the biggest of problems, but the fact that she moves out of the way and gets super armor, even if you do hit her, oof. Don't like it. Getting a bleed proc right before a crit is really nice, letting the Lord of Bloods increase our damage for the crit. And all that progress is undone by a ducky dance, lovely. Another bleed, we're using jump attacks. I know I said jump attacks were too slow with America Hammer, but they're one of the faster moves you can use with a scythe, because it's terrible. Get a stance break, but we can't crit. Sometimes you don't crit. You just hit the button that crits and you don't crit. It's fun. Phase two starts with an onion and we can run in with good timing to charge in R2 and not take a tick of the stink. No crit from the stance break. She puts a flower in front of her and she has the shortest crit window of any boss in the game but i know some of you think tibia mariners are harder so i guess your opinion's valid too technically you can't crit them so maybe you're right stance break again i was worried we get a bleed crit but no it's just a nice good crit the bleed comes after right before the onion making her really low charged attack a little combo we just need one more hit she jumps we punish that's it we closed out all remembrances at eight hours and 37 minutes minutes died 63 times and killed 37 bosses. That's D tier, tied with Faith only, which did not have any vigor. It's worse than Elon Musk's build. It's worse than the first Wolverine video, which was my third time beating this game ever. Most notably though, it's worse than the Samurai starting gear run, which means that if you booted up the game, you would have more fun just never switching your gear than you would using a weapon you had to farm. Reapers ain't great, y'all. The standard scythe has a two hit charge attack. The wing scythe has some holy damage, but the only one worth using is the halo scythe. And that is just because you do not have to use it as a reaper. So yeah, I guess the aesthetics of it are cool. If you want to try and make it work, go ahead, but you got to buff this shit with something. If you don't watch these runs live, follow us on Twitch. We're finding new ways to play Elden Ring all the time. Join the Patreon if you want to support the channel. It's the best place to do it, and you'll get access to some exclusive videos. And make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next one.